Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to trauma bond again. I know you guys love these sessions and so do I. So we're gonna be talking about, of course, the School for Troubled Girls and how my 15 month stay turned into three years, uh, the damage that was done within my family while I was there, the isolation, the separation, and the exploitation of me as a child laborer for this center. So if you wanna hear how this all happened and also see this makeup look, just keep watching. Let's get started. I'm gonna clip the fronts of my hair back with these kitsch clips. They are creaseless. So my last get ready with me was a drugstore slash uh, affordable makeup look. This get ready with me is gonna be an expensive makeup look. So I'm gonna use a lot of Dior. I love Dior. Uh, some Pat McGrath and some random stuff in between. Maybe a little Charlotte, who knows. Uh, I don't have a full face of Dior or Pat McGrath or Charlotte or whatever, so we're just gonna have to cocktail the expensive brands. This is the palette that I'm gonna use. I'm obsessed with it. Um, so, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I want a kind of mauve purpley look, so I'm gonna use a lot of these colors. I would feel ashamed if I didn't use any of those glitters, so I probably will. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a more modern take on it because sometimes I think the way that I apply eyeshadow is a little chuggy. Uh, I'm willing to admit that, so I'm gonna try to not be a chug today. I find my eyeshadow blends very easily if I use concealer as a base. So although it's not the most long lasting type of base you can use, uh, it is really easy to blend on top of. Also, of course, it's, um, it's a trauma bonding session. So we're gonna talk about some more experiences at the School for Troubled Girls how it was that I ended up staying well past 15 months, and also a little bit about how the schooling was. So a little less teaching, but you guys will see how we get the look. So you should be able to recreate it anyway. I know you guys, you guys know what you're doing. I don't have to break it down. And also I'm not that good at breaking it down. So I like just talking to you instead. So this is what our school experience was like. And also I'm gonna start with that shade because it's just the perfect shade to start with. So school was from 8 a.m. to 2 or 3 p.m. every day. And we pretty much taught ourselves in school. It was all on the computers and you would go to school with your dorm. So you didn't change classes. You stayed in the same room all day. There were no windows. Well, they rebuilt the schoolhouse after I left, but in my time there were no windows. I doubt there's windows in them now. And we would just stare forward into this cubicle for the whole school day. And at the top of each hour, they would tell you to change classes. So you would spend like an hour in each class. The classes uh, were from a Christian-based curriculum and truly did not make any sense like it would like in our science courses it would talk about how darwinism is not real and evolution isn't real and creationism whatever it was like proponents of creationism which is like i mean if you want to teach that i think you should teach it in church i don't think you should teach it in school I don't, I don't think they should be connected, schooling and the Bible, because, I don't know, I think it's kind of shysty. So we did that all day, it was super boring, and the reason why I got stuck there so long is because eventually, even after I graduated the program after 15 months, I wasn't done with my schooling, and they presented, um, <laughs> blocks so that I couldn't finish because I was a very low paid laborer for them. So I'll get into that later, but 
let's talk a little bit more about the teachers and stuff first. So the people who taught us sometimes changed in the beginning. Sometimes this woman named Kim who taught us and she did have a strong background in math and science. She was one of the only people who knew how to help us find the answers. And then there was another teacher that I had named Miss Sum Sumter, Sumner. I think it was Miss Sumner. And she was hilarious, first of all, because she was the only staff member who also kind of lived in the normal world. So she would say things that she weren't, wasn't allowed to all the time and we all just kept it a secret. And she also would help us cheat because she wasn't a very legitimate teacher. I don't know if she had any teaching background, but it seemed like not. Or if she did, it wasn't in like math or science. Like maybe she was an English teacher in her past life. I don't know, but she didn't know much. So she would call you up to the front if you were stuck on a problem because we had to type every answer in. And if you didn't get the answer, you would just be stuck. So sometimes you'd be stuck on one question all day and you could not find the answer to it. So you'd ask the teacher to help you. You'd wait in line. Sometimes you'd wait for two hours and you would just be like, you'd be waiting into the next class already. Um, but she would call you up and she would say some gibberish about how to find the answer to the problem. And then she would just write the answer on a post-it and push it towards you. So she would just give you the answer and have you go back to your seat, um, which was nice and all. But then like, <laughs> By the, time, by the time you encountered a similar struggle again, you still didn't know how to move past it. Like, you just, she wasn't, she wasn't teaching. The teachers didn't teach. And then for a while too, uh, we had this teacher named Miss Sarah, and she's conniving. I've talked about her in the past. Uh, she's still on their website if you care to take a peek at her. Um, she just was the sneakiest, she was the sneakiest mean girl I've ever met in my life because she came off initially as so sincere and so kind. And then after being around her for a while, she would say things to you that were really out of pocket or really mean spirited or like put you down in subtle ways. So she started out as my teacher and I don't think she had a teaching background. And then they moved her to counselor. They moved our school teacher to counselor. Somebody explain why that doesn't make sense. Like normal people don't just become counselors for troubled teens in particular where you should have an adequate amount of training um, out of nowhere. So she was a church kid. She grew up in the church and she was kind of unfeeling, uh, very into this like cult mentality and very just sneaky sneak. She has the face of an angel and she appears very kind and gracious, but she's not. And that's why it makes me even more crazy because there were more, definitely more people like this woman named Kate who are outwardly unkind and outwardly um, like aggressive. But because Sarah did it in such a like sneaky calm way, it just bothers me even more because of the lack of authenticity. Like be a or don't but like don't 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 be like that and then smile at me it just gives me the creepy creeps so that's kind of like how the teachers were oh and then also uh, for a certain amount of time I can't remember if it was like an hour or half an hour or 25 minutes uh, at the start of our school days we did this kind of like Bible study thing and I can't remember the name of them. I'm gonna have to ask somebody, but we had these pamphlets and you had to finish all these pamphlets in order to graduate. So sometimes you'd be behind on like stacks of them and you would have to like make up extra time um, in uh, before you could actually go home from the program. Like if you were el eligible to graduate and you didn't finish these, they would, uh, they would make it so you had to like make up time and finish the weird stuff. So we did that in the school day. And then also, um, obviously you can tell by what I'm saying already that the education wasn't good, but it gets worse. Because as you leveled up in the program, you got certain privileges and whatnot, and that would cause you to be taken out of school all of the time. So if you were, um, 
leveling up and they trusted you, then you would leave school to go cook the girls lunch or you would leave school to go and clean the hotels that were at the top of the hill. If there was a parent visit or really any visitors in general, they would take us out of the school, drive us up the, um, up the hill in a golf course. Sometimes we'd have to walk, which was miserable because it was a steep hill. And it was in Alabama, it was hot. And we were in our khakis, our school clothes, we weren't in like fitness outfits. So it was like torturous to have to go clean the hotels. Uh, cleaning the hotels was real life child labor because obviously we didn't get paid. We lost our education in the meantime and we would have to go and clean like 20 hotel rooms, uh, stripping the bed, doing all the laundry, all of the above. Sometimes we even liked getting pulled out of school. Like I, for one, liked it when I was on kitchen duty because I have never been a great student. I don't enjoy being in school, but I needed to be in school. Like, obviously any teenager, like, you take them out of school, they might like it. And at the time I liked it because it was a change in the freaking boring schedule and everything. I got a little bit of freedom, got to cook, be in the kitchen not in in the kitchen staff they weren't really mean they were actually really quite nice usually because they weren't part of like the residential program so they didn't have the, those daily frustrations with you so they were a little bit nicer so i quite like the kitchen duty but should i have been taken out of school to go cook and clean no absolutely not i want a really deep um crease so i'm just gonna go in a lot with that black just back and forth and just try to build it up i mean, i try to keep the depth really low because when it starts going up my eye i don't feel pretty anymore so i'm just gonna concentrate it down here okay so now let's talk about kind of like how the schooling affected my ability to leave so first of all there was this program and it was a trap and I got caught up in it um, really bad and I had no parental, like, I had no strong parent parental influence in my life and my parents just kind of gave me up and, and backed out of it and didn't, didn't return. So there was this option to join this program called Emerging Leaders. This still exists today. They have summits all over the world because it's their biggest way to recruit students and turn them into laborers. And I got caught up in this. I used to be really ashamed that I got caught up in it. But as I get older, I realize I was 15 years old. My parents didn't stop me. And the only adults that I was around in my life, the only people who were giving me approval at that time were encouraging me to do it. So what it meant was you signed up to be an emerging leader and you would get certain perks within the program. I'm gonna use this Temp2 stencil just as a hard edge to do my shadow. So I signed up to be an emerging leader and I was approved because I was a pretty good student. Like I just minded my own business. I didn't go around telling on people and all of that mess like a lot of girls did, but I just minded my own business. I didn't break any rules. I just kept to myself. I bought into their faith. So they were like, yeah, approved. They approved me straight away. Like my parents let me do it. It blows my mind that my parents let me get sucked into a cult and then, and then commit more of myself to a cult. Uh, but like, I guess they didn't see it that way at that time. They just thought, okay, Emily's safe. Uh, let's let her stay. She wants to, let's let her do it. And I was gonna move on, but on that subject too, my parents didn't let me do anything, but they did let me stay at this school and work for nothing. Um, so back to what the EL, the Emerging Leaders Program was. So you got certain privileges, but you vowed to stay past graduation for three months on an internship. You stayed in the, in the intern dorm with, there was always usually three girls at a time, but there were six bunks in there. 
So with three to six girls, you would stay there and you would assist staff and stuff with like daily activities. So essentially after graduation, it was an unpaid work opportunity. And if you were afraid of going back home like I was, this was kind of like your peace of mind because they would tell us all the time that like God's protection didn't extend outside of his will and it was God's will for us to be there. Um, so I was really actually afraid of leaving. So I signed up for this program. And then after my 15 months, I moved into the dorms of like the lesser, um, of the other interns. I'm just gonna take this nude color just to kind of brighten my inner corner there. I thought that it would get brighter with that last shadow, but it really didn't. I think that last shadow has gray dust all over it. So I moved into that dorm. My parents signed off on me being um, an unpaid laborer for them. And I started to like work my shifts or whatever. And I was so indoctrinated um, just by being there already for 15 months that like I really believed that I was in the right place at that time. Let's put on these Ardell Wispies. I used them in my last video and I like them so much. So I want to wear them again. Now, I just want to take the time to express to you guys that this is, this teen center ran the same way that cults do. They convince you and they make it, they instill it in you that you are in harm's way if you leave, if you reconnect with old influences, if you disagree with their teachings in any way, like they were largely operating as a cult. And as a child, I got sucked into that. And I had no protection. I had no familial support um, that, was, that was close to me. Like, I was living alone in this world, and I was navigating as best I could. And in my pea brain, I thought that I was safest at the program because... Everybody in my life told me so, and I did not have a stable home life, and I honestly didn't feel safe at home either. So I ended up staying for those additional months because I got totally caught up in their cult vibes. Um, and they used this to keep me longer and longer. So after my initial um, three months was up, it was time for me to go home, but I wasn't finished with high school. And I was working instead of going to school. So sometimes I was in school, but I was largely not in school. And they would actually pull me out of school all the time. And then when my mom started calling and asking why I wasn't in school, because my mom by that time, after my three months of an internship or whatever, she was like, I want to take Emily home. Like, it's been longer than 15 months, long than I, longer than I bargained for. And then they started freezing her out. So they knew, the directors knew that I was like on the LGBTQ spectrum. So because they were always like monitoring it and in my counseling sessions or something, my fake counseling sessions, uh, I had like confessed to being like interested in girls as well, which was to me like the ultimate sin of all sins or whatever. And so the director called me into her office and she gave me actually a huge talk about my mom. And she said that I was part of the LGBTQ because my mom was a poor influence on me. And so the one person who is finally vouching for me to come home, somebody, the one adult who was finally like, enough is enough, I want her back. And I was still a minor, by the way. Uh, she was frozen out and she, they turned us against each other. So although I was still kind to my mom and I stayed in contact with her loosely, 
She couldn't get me out. They weren't answering her calls. And on the inside, they were turning me against her. And, you know, she put me there. I was totally brainwashed and up their butts. And so I, I believed like what they were saying. And now that I'm, I'm 29, by the way, now that I'm older, it's so apparent to me how messed up this is. But when I was young, I didn't know how, how messed up it was. Like I had no idea because I had already come from a very dysfunctional family. And then I was shipped out to Alabama. I had just like trauma on trauma on trauma. I didn't, I didn't know that any of this stuff was so backwards. Like, I didn't know, I didn't know. When you come from a dysfunctional home, you just don't know. Like, honestly, regarding a lot of things until I started to get older, like, I'm thinking like older as in 25, 26, 27, I didn't know. A lot of mistakes I've made in my life and a lot of unhealthy, negative, relationships I've been in is because I'm like, I don't know. It's my responsibility from adulthood. Don't get me wrong. From adulthood, I believe it was my responsibility to come to know. So eventually I did. And I'm proud of myself for that because some people don't always come out of that thinking. Some people don't always heal from their trauma. And I feel that I did. Um, but it was still a super long process. Right, so I kind of let them take my mom out of my life. Uh, I didn't respect my mom anymore. And then my dad is, my dad was in cahoots with them the whole time. So I didn't have that problem with my dad. Uh, they revered my dad, even though um, in my testimony, they had me share my story. I am gonna use that blue, I can't, I can't resist. Um, they had me share my story in front of people who were visiting and people who were from the organization and I said in my testimony that my dad was abusive towards me. And um, they, they never let me talk about it ever again. So I thought that I didn't tell my story well enough for something. Then years later, I realized, no, they, they took his side and they didn't let me, they, they silenced my voice. Like they wouldn't let me share my story, share what he had done. Like they successfully silenced me. And my mom also from being divorced from my dad and having to go through a lot herself, I do believe my mom is a victim in a lot of ways, which is why people are like, how could you ever forgive and blah, 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 blah. Well, my mom has been a victim of really serious abuse. So I don't hold her against it. Like she's had to heal herself. So don't get me wrong. I have absolutely flipped on my mom before out of anger and mistrust of her giving me up to these people but she has been victimized from within this religious affiliation so many times that I'm not just going to pin it all on my mom because she went through a lot. Also, I really like this Anastasia Brow Freeze. I've tried a lot of brow products and I think I like this one the best, but I have straight hair on my eyebrows. Like it wants to go straight. I have a old lamination right now and um, this brow gel will not hold all day. It just won't. But when it falls, it doesn't get all yucky looking. And you can still kind of, it stays waxy so you can work them back up. So I like this. Somebody asked for an updated brow routine. So this is gonna be it. I use this gel and then a pencil or a pomade of some kind. And I mostly focus on the tail. I like to airbrush my eyebrows, but I can't always be doing that. I have a couple videos on that I can link for you if you're interested. Okay, so let's get back on the subject of how I how my time went from 15 months to three years. So when it was time for me to leave, 
uh, they had kind of phased my mom out and they knew that I wouldn't leave without finishing high school because I couldn't, like me, like I couldn't just go back to school after being kidnapped away and then now part of a cult. Like I did not want to go home and go back to high school after this. I could, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. Like, what would happen to me if I did? I don't know. I just couldn't. So I was trying to finish high school, and they knew I was struggling in uh, algebra. So they, my mom, calling every single day saying, can you just switch the class? Just switch the class so she can graduate. Switch the class. I had one algebra class left. I was in it for a year, stuck. And I wasn't in school for all that year. I was working for them. Let's use the DR foundation. I really, I think this is my favorite foundation right now, besides Makeup Forever, which is like my just, my usual. This is a really, it's like lightweight, like there's no cake. It's also low coverage, but I like my coverage in my concealer. Filter. So I was in algebra, uh, stuck in this class for a year. There's no way that I could finish it because we didn't have teachers. Like, I told you about our teachers, right? Like, we had the teachers, but they didn't know how to teach. So I just sat there not finishing my schoolwork and honestly avoiding my schoolwork because it made me feel stupid. They allowed this. They exploited me for free labor. They gave me a position because I finished the program, they, the emerging leaders thing, and then they made a position for me, just for me, because I was so docile. They were like, let's milk this cow, like me being the cow. I was doing their work. They were like, we have a, pro uh, a promotion for you is how they phrased it. We're creating the, um, the position of junior staff. We'll give you a staff apartment. You can move in there and we'll start paying you because for the emerging leaders thing, I was working for free. And so I was like, okay, they'll start paying me. That's totally awesome because I've been here a long time working for free. And then I was meant to go to this, I was meant to go to school in the middle of the day and then I would work after I would go to school. But they were taking me out of school all the time for like other jobs because work still needed to be done. I needed to supervise then girls cleaning in the hotel. I needed to help myself. I needed to do all this stuff. So they created this position and then they told me that the pay though, because I would live here, free room and board, and I ate here and whatever, whatever, my pay was reduced. And in that meeting, they never told me what my takeaway pay would be. They never told me my hourly, never. They deducted it for my pay, for my W-2, and every other, every two weeks, I would make around $220 to $250. Divide that by 80. Let me do that math right now. I've done it before, but I feel like I forget. So like, let's just say, let's average them. So 235 divided by 80 hours a week. That's 290 an hour. So I was working there for $2.90 an hour while I was trying to finish high school. Um, and despite my mom petitioning to take me or swap me classes, they did not switch me because they knew that if I graduated at high school, I could go home. This place is a place that tries to keep you forever. And I didn't have the parental advocates that I needed to just say, that she's not staying longer and she's she's coming home like that's what I needed my parents to do for me I needed them to take control and take me home uh, but they didn't do that for me because they my parents listen they had four kids they were focused on managing that and there was no time to be parents to me it's a Dior backstage concealer for bronzer and this is something that I didn't, I didn't realize at the time and I didn't realize for many, many years that like 
I was taking a back seat for Hannah to kind of, so that they could manage her better. And I don't have any resentment about that at all because like that's my sister and I love her and she's gone now and I miss her. Um, but I do have resentment in the fact that I'm just like, I needed that family support. And now I work with clients so I understand, like I see them raise their families and I notice their teenagers just getting so much familial support that it gives them confidence and it, and they have a line of communication open with their parents that allows them to make the right choices. And I didn't have that and I'm mad about it, but I'm also glad about it because um, maybe I wouldn't have done the things left the state, done the things that I did if I didn't have it, like, if I, if I had an amazing upbringing and overall life experience. I also want to be a little bit more contoury, so I'm going to use, like, this shade from MLB. It's called, it's their cream bronzer in M77, and it's just a little bit cooler, and I want it just right in here to just shade a little bit more. So yeah, that's kind of how I ended up staying. And then as soon as I finally graduated high school, I graduated because my mom finally had a talk with one of the teachers and they finally all agreed to let me come out of Algebra 2 and they replaced it with some kind of like economics, finance, like general thing. And they said she can graduate with this course. And my mom was like, thank you, but why didn't you offer that over a year ago? Uh, you, you jerks um so she was satisfied enough by that i completed high school and then i went home so so i completed high school and then i finally went home it was dragged out for forever my mom had been pushed away from me and we didn't rebuild that relationship for a few years until it was that I got home and my dad started rejecting me. When I first got home, I was like my dad's pet. He always had a pet. He had four girls. Um, two of my sisters were initially his favorites our whole lives. I was never his favorite. He never liked me. Um, but because I was like affiliated with his religion now and I was doing everything he kind of asked me to, I was like, wow, I finally got my dad's approval and now we can have a good relationship. I feel good about it because I had daddy issues. You know, I had daddy issues. So I really wanted his approval. So he approved for me. He approved of me for a short time and then I got into a lesbian relationship and then he was just done with me. Like done with me and I was done with him for a good several years because that hurt my feelings. So yeah, so that hurt me, but I already kind of talked about how we reconciled in the last video. Um, so I can link that for you. I'm not going to explain it all over again, but don't worry, like everything's fine now. Um, yeah, so that's like basically how I got stuck there. Um, also, I think it's, I think it's important to add that a girl like me with daddy issues, like teenagers need approval from the adults around them. And I really wanted that. And I kind of got a little bit of that by working at this program, even though it was the worst thing for me and destroyed my well-being, destroyed it. All my time there destroyed my sense of self. I lost my sense of self and didn't regain it until after I left. So like, I'm trying to like let you in my mind because it seems like, oh, well you chose to stay. I really didn't. I was a victim of abusers and I had Stockholm syndrome. I saw them as like something to be revered and I wanted their approval and my parents didn't intervene. So that's like what happened to me. And people ask all the time, like, oh my God, how did you end up staying so long? That's how I did. So I wasn't in the program for 15 months. I was in the program for 15 months and then I spent like an, an additional year and a half um, being their slave. So I had uh, more privileges, but like at the same time, not really. I didn't have internet. Um, I had no access to my family. I could call them, but that was it. I had a little staff flip phone 
and I could make calls on that. Um, so yeah, that was what happened. Also, I was gonna bake, but I don't wanna bake. I wanna just use this face powder. This is a face and body powder in one end from Dior. This is like a super subtle powder. This is a powder for people who hate powder. I keep a bunch of these in my makeup kit because um, I have many clients who are like, don't put powder on me. And so I just slip this on them because it mattifies and holds everything down without looking powdery. And one thing about this product is that this the press, like they made this beautiful pattern in it, but the press uh, makes it hard to get the product out. So I kind of like scrape it a little and then like push my brush into it. It also has like a touch of luminosity to it, which I also like because I want to be glowy, but I don't want to be like a disco ball. Like I want to be glowy, but I don't want to be shiny. I like having luminous skin, but it doesn't really like, luminosity doesn't really like me. Like it just looks too oily, especially on camera. So this is kind of like the perfect mishmash of things. Let me show you again. It's very nice. I also have a lot of juice on the behind the scenes, which I never would have had. Like my perspective is kind of unique because I was like teacher's pet and I went to all these staff meetings and stuff. They took me out of school for the staff meetings as well because they thought it was really important to have my input as 16, 17 year old. <laughs> Don't even get me started on why it was important to have my input in the staff meeting instead of in school, but it was, it was important to them. So I got to sit in on all the insanity. Like I got to listen to their thoughts in real time and it was shocking it was shocking how bob would treat his wife he's the director and like the mastermind of it all it was shocking how he would turn on us staff members he was aggressive he was angry he was yelling all the time he was always like from across we were all sitting there like 12 at least 12 people all adults who worked at this program and Carla, the wife, was trying to tell, was trying to say something, and he straight up told her to be quiet, like in a super rude tone, like "be quiet, stop talking," and um, that's just, I guess, like the nature of that religion is that women, well, on how they view that religion, it's not everybody. Don't get me wrong, but um he viewed his wife as less than him and she should shut up sometimes like it was crazy he yelled at me several times throughout my time there too and um I'm telling you guys like I had daddy issues I I didn't want to be yelled at by him it really hurt me when he yelled at me because I was just a kid this isn't my father this is some random man yelling at me like are you kidding and something he would say that would make all the girls in the program really, really upset. He'd say, who's your daddy? Because technically our parents signed over, actually mine too, because even though I graduated the program, I was still, they were my legal guardians, these people. He was my legal guardians and he would say, who's your daddy? And oh my God, when he said that, you look around the room and everybody looked so pissed so pissed because it was hurtful because you know you're stuck there in prison and then your captor is taunting you this is a nice bronzer but it's a little dark for me and also these like as soon as you place them they're patchy so you have to work at it but unfortunately i've gone through like 10 of these and they're still just kind of my favorite because they have the warmness that I'm looking for. No other bronzer has that warmth besides just like creams. And I need a powder because I need to be extra bronzy. If you're any tanner than me, you'll probably love that. Okay, this is just my Ashton lip liner. Oh my God, I, I, I'll do my brows last. This is ColourPop. I'm in a Dior mood, so I'm gonna use a Dior lipstick. It's the only Dior lipstick I own besides a couple reds, and it's called 
220 beige couture velvet and it's beautiful. I didn't use it for a while because it was so pretty. I think since we're wrapping up the look, that's probably it for the stories. I'm trying to think. Oh, I do have something to tell you. So like I mentioned, I kind of had like Stockholm syndrome and their purpose, like they make it a mission to recruit from within because it's cheap labor for them. It's also really easy to train because we already knew all the rules. They didn't have to spend time training us. And they had already broken us down. So we would do what they said and we would not incorporate like our own ideas because it was a very strict program. So it's a, manipula it's a manipulative tactic and it works. I'm using this Surratt eyebrow pencil. This is my favorite blonde pencil that I found. It's refillable. So when you're out, you like pull this off and pop a new one in. I've never run out yet because there's actually quite a good amount of product in there. So this is my fave. It's my fave. And I just mostly shade the tail. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys. Okay. I want to tell you guys about this girl. I'm not going to say her name because I feel like she, it's not fair to her, but she was admitted into the program the same time as I was. And she was recruited in the Emerging Leaders Program and then ultimately recruited as staff. And we both went, we both got there in the same month in 2009. She is still there. She's on their website, which is why I'm not gonna say her name. I feel bad for the girl, but at the same time, at this point, she's probably almost 30. She let them steal her life. You know, like you do have a responsibility, I think, into adulthood to reclaim, but I imagine it would be really, really hard for her to go anywhere at this point. She's lived her entire, almost her entire teenage years and all of her adulthood in captivity. So honestly, it's really sad. And now that she's older, around my age, I don't know where else she would work if she wanted to leave. This is her entire setup for her career. And you, you, they also promise you like big dreams. Like they tell you you're chosen and you're gonna do amazing things, but not if you leave. So obviously it has to be Dior. I'm already quite glowy because that powder has a good amount of luminosity to it. And so did the Hourglass Blush, which is called Heat by the way. So I'm just gonna use that beige color and do a little bit. It's fun to be glowy. And it's fun to talk about these crazy people. It gives me a release to talk about it. Ever since I started talking about it, I have been so validated by you guys. And I just want you to know that I love you. Uh, it feels good like to know that I'm not alone and I know you guys have Many of you have parallel experiences to mine and it makes me happy, not that we went through this, but that we have found each other and can identify with each other because that's really hard. Um, I've made one friend in my life who was also raised in a cult. Uh, she happens to be my best, one of my closest friends not going to say her name because it's her privacy and her life, but she's the only person besides people on the internet who have really understood where I'm coming from. Uh, because at the end of the day, like people will hear these stories and be like, how, how come you didn't just leave? But when you're tied to a cult or tied to a belief system that controls you, it's very hard. Um, especially when you're a minor, it's really hard. So I appreciate you guys so much. And I think this is the finished look. 
I kind of like the clips. I don't know if I even want to take them down. I did my hair with a crimper and, um, oh, I put it away. I would show you, but I put it away. Just like the Revlon one. And it always looks bad uh, until the next day. It always just looks like I've made my hair messy. I also have a lot of breakage. So certain styles, you can see it like, most of my hair is a certain length, not because it was cut, but because it snapped. Um, <laughs> so, I'm trying to hide it. And the best way to usually hide it is by putting it half up. So I think I'm gonna do that. I was supposed to go to a little event that I was invited to, um, but they, <laughs> They ran out of product. It was like a gifting event. They ran out of product and they were like, we're so sorry, but we'll, we'll send it to you in the mail. We're closing early. So I started getting ready and then they said that they were canceling. So I did a YouTube instead, but that's why my hair is even done in the first place. I have nowhere to be, but I was supposed to go somewhere. And yeah, look at that clip. Doesn't it just make you glad? Like for me, it just makes me glad. So let me know what you think about this look in the comments below. And um, I appreciate you guys again. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye.